Many beginners mistakenly think that learning one programming language immediately turns them into a great programmer. But the truth is that programming legends like Bill Gates, Terry Davis or Linus Torvalds are not considered stars because they have mastered all features of their programming language, but because they are extraordinarily good problem solvers. Programming is not simply the writing of some cryptic code. Programming is the solving of problems with the help of code and for that we need a basic understanding of a programming language. This is only one out of many tools and in the end, to use this tool right, it requires other skills of its own as well. Hello and welcome to the J Sparrow Start Programming channel. My name is Ben and in this video I'm going to show you how you can easily solve all problems in programming by following a set of specified steps. After this video you will be able to tackle every problem in any kind of program. This ability will create the basis of your programming career and I am sure it will help you a lot, so let's get right into it. How do we proceed if we find a problem within our program? I believe that first of all it might be important to define what a problem actually is. Basically, we do have a problem if there is a difference between the situation that is and the situation that we want it to be. So for example, if we have a bug in our program, then the it state of our program is not the same as the intended state because something doesn't work like it was actually intended. Maybe we instead have the goal that a specific feature in our program is present and is not implemented yet. Then that is also a problem because the condition of our program does not match with the one that is in right now. These are the kind of issues one has to solve as a programmer. But where do you even start here? Let's go through the different steps. Step number one, identify the problem. First, you identify the problem properly. That's a step. I feel like that at least 90% of the developers just skip that step entirely. But it is actually the most important step and it makes it very clear to you what the desired state is and how the current state is. And you do need to know exactly what the real job is actually requiring of you before you try and get to the solution of this. Otherwise solving your problem is like wandering around through a fog or a labyrinth, meaning that you just won't get to your goal or at least it takes much longer than it should. Identifying the problem properly is already half the battle and often also takes a large part of the time. But doing this step right from the start will allow you to go further in your solving. Step number two. Look if and how other programmers have already solved a similar problem. You should look whether and how other programmers have solved very similar problems to the one you're having right now. In most cases you can either directly solve the problem in this step or get an understanding of how you should address the issue which will already save you a lot of time and energy. It is however important to properly study the solution as well because otherwise you won't really learn from this incident. Step number 3. Create a rough plan and identify part problems. You need to create a rough plan for yourself of how you want to address the problem because most problems can be divided into several smaller parts. It is important to identify these smaller parts and be able to address each of them individually. Tackling several smaller problems is a lot easier and feels less overwhelming than going for a big problem without really knowing where to start. This step will get you organized for the future steps. Generally speaking, there is always the possibility to first solve the problem in your head with pseudocode to create another possibility to think about the whole implementation, but I personally don't do that myself. I do not want to leave this out, but I also don't want to make it seem like this is a really important part of step 4 since I don't do it myself and I don't think it's absolutely necessary. With your pseudocode you can definitely look at the algorithm before implementing, but I personally do this while I code and I believe this might be more time efficient. For beginners however, this could be a very good way to practice abstract thinking. The last step is number 5, refactoring. This step should never be missing in any form of bug fixing or other problem solving. Check your code after the implementation and run tests with it as well. Make sure that it is written clean and in the correct way, that redundant code is removed, that variables are all properly named and that you have kept the general style of the project so the readability does not suffer. Speaking of bug fixes, refactoring and clean code, I want to draw your attention towards our personal design tool that can solve all your Java code problems with a click of a button. I'm talking about Captain J Sparrow, your Java refactoring partner. 
JSparrow can help you remove dead code, fix bugs, increase performance and the security of your program. If you have to work on an older Java project and read to refactor code before you can continue implementing, JSparrow can do that for you. We already tested JSparrow in many open source projects and the result was incredible. JSparrow saved these projects thousands of hours of time, saved them hundreds of thousands of dollars and I think you can see that there is a reason why already thousands of developers worldwide are using JSparrow. The best part is that you can use JSparrow for free. Just check out the link in the video description and you can get 20 of our most liked refactoring rules for free. I'm sure you will love it. To finish this video, let's summarize all the steps once again which can help you with the solving of any problem. Step number one is to identify the problem. Step number two is to look if and how other programmers have already solved a similar problem. Step number three is to create a rough plan and identify part problems. Step number four is to implement and step number five is the refactoring and testing of freshly implemented code. Most people directly stop after step number four, which is obviously not very effective in the long term. Do yourself a favor and really go through all five steps every time you're working on a programming problem. You will see that after this video, your level of addressing problems will be much higher and you will be able to address, identify and handle issues more easily. Last but not least, practice makes perfect. So give yourself time and soon you will automatically do these steps. For the rest, that's it with the video. If you subscribe, you will make sure to stay motivated as far as programming goes because we regularly upload new content. And if you feel that these 5 problem solving steps were helpful to you, then also please leave a like and activate the bell to not miss anything. In that sense, I wish you a wonderful day, have fun programming and see you in the next video. Goodbye!